this schizophrenic story reaches its final act as if it were written by a drunk child. <laughs> Hi there, you might know me as the guy who takes almost a year and a half to make a video he mentioned in passing. I can make a separate video breaking down every single scene and explaining why it's funny. Well, good news, I'm finally doing it. Episode 0 of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya is the most entertaining train wreck you will ever watch, and I'm about to make it even worse. First of all, this is a Haruhi video, so I'm bringing back the desaturation filter. It's worked for me ever since the first Haruhi video was taken down so many moons ago so it's here to stay. But if you want to view my entire trilogy of Haruhi videos including this one unaltered, Patreon in the description. Another thing I'm doing so this isn't just a straight clip show is shuffling the order of the scenes around. If you find this video hard to follow, good. I'm doing this on purpose. Color me jealous, I just want to create something that can at least hold a candle to the nightmare that is this movie. Don't worry though, I'll have timestamps for every scene on screen and let's be real, you're only only here to learn just how badly they screwed this film up. With that 4 hour intro out of the way, let's get started. As the curtain rises on our new favorite film, a shockingly poor drawing of the SOS Brigade logo sets the mood, followed up immediately by Mikuru being forced to sing with a gun to her head. Alright, now we're in the middle of the final battle, and despite the fact that Haruhi is watching this scene play out, we see two magical powers being used. For those who haven't seen the show, Haruhi cast Nagato, Mikuru, and Koizumi as an alien, a time traveler, and an esper respectively. The funny thing is, they actually are all these things, and she isn't allowed to know that, nor is she allowed to know that she herself has reality-altering powers. So, with that being the case, can somebody please explain to me why Koizumi uses unrelenting force to send Nagato into the stratosphere. The special effects throughout this entire movie barely even qualify as such. Hell, in this scene alone, Mikuru gets attacked by the editor repeatedly dipping the frame to white. All I want to know is why Haruhi watched this both physically and on screen and didn't say anything. And if that's not enough, Nagato's cat Shamison starts talking. It's not like you haven't done something like that before, so just wave your little stick at him and... I am also a ventriloquist. <laughs> These people are so lucky that this girl is so stupid. Her name is Mikuru Asahina. His name is Kion. On the outside, she seems like a normal, kind, and extremely cute girl. On the outside, he might seem like a normal, confident, and reliable narrator. But in reality, she's a battle waitress from the future. But in reality, he's a total dumbass from hell. Mikuru is over here struggling to act, while Kion attempts to explain away Haruhi's plot as if he's actively working against the film. <laughs> Okay, so this movie has ads in the middle of it because Haruhi borrowed all of the equipment she needed to make it in exchange for the promotion. That's both hilarious and egregious enough, but then Mr. Editor over here decided to plop the first one right after Mikuru and Nagato's first big fight. Just take a wild guess which two characters are doing this ad read real quick. I have never been hit by whiplash from a cut so hard until now. Also, you might notice that Mikuru magically changed back into her bunny girl outfit, between shots. Well, in the very next scene after this ad, we see Mikuru walking home from the battle and changing into the bunny girl outfit. If they had just waited one more scene, this transition into the ad would have been so much less jarring. Remove Nagato from the scene and all of a sudden, it's a natural part of the film. But you know Haruhi, her and the word natural don't mix. So after the most unflattering rapid zoom in I've ever seen, Mikuru starts shooting lasers out of her eyes. Nagato retaliates with her magic wand and- <laughs> Come on, dude. I mean, maybe this was before keyframes were invented? I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say- <laughs> Also, a bunch of teachers bust the group for setting off fireworks on the roof of the school, and not only did they leave that in the movie, they cut it at the funniest time possible. Mikuro, you have to get up and fight! Hurry! Hey, what's going on? Special shoutouts to the two worst extras I've ever seen, but in the shot right afterwards, we see something surprisingly competent. Sure, the acting could use some work, but there aren't any awkward pauses, and Kion's narration chimes in at the right time. Color me impressed. And so... Thanks to her innocent charm, the <laughs> cabbage sold out in record time. They were so close, and yet 
no, they were exclusively close. All you had to do was mute the audio of the footage here. I know it might seem like I'm laughing too much, but in my defense, there's a character in the movie who also can't contain herself. Suruya completely ruins every scene she's in because she can't help but laugh at Mikuru. And instead of just reshooting, it's left in as is. You know, I wonder if anyone's ever made a show where the first take is the only one they use. Like a well-written sitcom, but the actors only have one chance to get their lines right, sink or swim. I think that'd be fun to watch. Speaking of fun to watch, I love how you can tell exactly what Haruhi's stage directions were by watching Mikuru. The overdramatic gun throw is fantastic. Oh, that's right. Mikuru just tries to straight up shoot Nagato even though she has magic, and the guns are introduced by another whiplash-inducing cut to a close-up of her holding them. Also, I think this goes without saying, but you probably shouldn't leave in the footage of one of the actors going off script and assaulting another actor while the director runs up and yells for them to stop. I guess I should have expected this, though. This movie is all about bold choices, after all. For example, what was an action movie quickly turns into a romantic comedy for some reason. Nagato stops Koizumi from kissing Mikuru and tells him that he must choose her instead for the sake of the universe even though she was totally trying to murder him like five minutes ago. Koizumi then says the best line in the movie. I understand that he... No, in this scene it's me, so I. I am a kind of key, and a key all by itself does not have any power whatsoever. And then proceeds to monologue for an entire minute because he's Koizumi. Ultimately, he just says that he needs to think about it. And then Nagato just agrees and says, yeah, my timing was terrible with this. Um, didn't you say the universe was at stake here? And then a few scenes later, she says she's going to take his love by force. This lady's motivations change more than Edwin Jackson changed teams. Also, I don't think I need to mention this, but when Nagato ducks under the window, we can still see her wizard hat. Flashback to 10 minutes ago, and we're blessed with dramatic music that sounds like a Super Nintendo taking a shit. Kion comments that between shots, the lighting has changed dramatically, but I don't really see it. Maybe it's possible if Nagato was facing the same way the entire time, because in the first shot it looks like the sun is behind her, while in the next it appears to be in front of her. I don't know, it's funny regardless of who screwed up here. Cherry on top, Kion flat out tells the audience that this scene is pointless and makes no sense. No matter how awkward a scene is, Haruhi's stage directions can always make it worse. Mikuru walks up to grab her paycheck, being just stilted enough to make the viewer slightly uncomfortable. Then she remembers what Haruhi told her to do with it. Come on, man. Next, we get to see Mikuru returning home. They decided to show this by shooting multiple takes of her running down the same corridor in the shopping district and then playing all five of them in order. Some of you might be thinking that this sounds tacky and terrible, but I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Since each take is shown in sequential order, we get to see Mikuru get more and more tired after each shot. Of course, this is nothing compared to how tired she is after being tossed in a lake. So she gets carried home by Koizumi and placed in one of those floor mattress things, which I've heard are apparently really good for your health. I'd like to try one someday, but that's besides the point. Kion, as I'm sure many of you know, is very protective of Mikuru. As according to Koizumi, she was practically designed to appeal to him in every possible way. You'd think he could pump the brakes for a few minutes while narrating a film that's going to be seen by dozens of his peers, but why would I ever assume that the people involved with this movie did something right? If your mouth gets any closer to her, someone standing off camera is gonna step into frame and kick your ass, damn it! When Koizumi's character gets introduced, Kion reels himself back in and manages to deliver a pretty competent narration. Big problem though, I can't look at these camera movements without picturing some dude holding a camera walking side by side with Koizumi. Kiyoani did a fantastic job of simulating god-awful camera work, deliberately removing every single shred of movie magic this film could have had. Also, all of a sudden Mikuru and Koizumi just start living together. There's no real explanation, but that's nothing compared to their two other roommates. Kion's sister must have come on set one day because she also lives with these two, despite never showing up in the movie prior. Plus, Shamison is here, who, if you'll remember, is fucking Nagato's. You know, the bad guy? <laughs> 
In case you forgot, here's one of their many encounters. Here we see Koizumi and Nagato having a competition to see who can be more awkward. Nagato has to hold on to Shamison so he doesn't fall off of her shoulder. Koizumi moves his hands around for no reason, and both of them stare at something different after every single sentence. Once Mikuru shows up and protects Koizumi from the worst special effect I've ever seen, Nagato drops this golden one-liner. Please make your funeral arrangements for when next we meet it will be the last. Would you like to hear how this scene can get even worse? So Nagato walks off as some guy in the background gets in his car and drives off. Mikuru says goodbye to Koizumi and walks off in the same direction that Nagato went while she's still in the shot. Alright, sure. Then we, uh, I guess we're panning up. Kion even questions why the camera pans up during this shot even though he's the cameraman. You know, before I wrote this script, I told myself that I'd find at least one funny thing in every single scene, but I probably could have gotten away with six or seven. Mikuru finishes her other part-time job, which also requires her to be scantily clad. Alright, everyone just hold on for a quick second. That was a moment of silence for how spectacular Crispin Freeman is at voice acting. I love how these animators and voice actors are so talented that they can intentionally screw up and make it seem believable. Also, for all intents and purposes, the dialogue in this scene isn't that bad. At least until you realize that Mikuru isn't looking at the man she's talking to, instead she's clearly reading off of a script that's right next to the camera. Don't sweat it, Mikuru. Kion is doing just as poorly as you are. He says that this cut to Mikuru and Nagato's second battle doesn't make any sense, but let's examine this for like three seconds. In the previous scene, Nagato said that she was going to kill Mikuru tomorrow, and now in this scene, it's tomorrow and she's attempting to kill her. This is like the one cut that isn't jarring, why are you actively sabotaging this film? And of course, there's this scene where Kion realizes way too late that Koizumi is standing in the shot with a bounce board so he adjusts in the most distracting and noisy way possible. One thing that I didn't mention when when I first talked about this scene is the fact that Kion overcorrects for the next shot, zooming in on Mikuru's face so much that the camera is slipping in and out of focus. Back to the rom-com part of the film, Nagato infiltrates Koizumi's high school and quickly gets to work. She puts a love letter in his locker, eats lunch with him, and waits by the school gate while staring at a f- <laughs> framed picture of him. <laughs> then Mikuru transfers in too, and her and Nagato have the worst fight scene I've ever seen immediately after a montage of them hanging out at school with Koizumi ends. Speaking of things ending, Suruya and Kion's friends need to end their acting careers immediately. Nagato mind controlled them to attack Mikuru, and Suruya starts laughing at her again. Don't worry though, she makes a very smooth recovery. <laughs> Controlled by the alien right now. Mikuru gets tossed into the lake, Taniguchi falls in too for some reason, then Koizumi shows up to pull Mikuru out, and the other two mind controlled bad guys do absolutely nothing to stop him. We also see Kion denying his role as the cameraman when he says that whoever they were accidentally got Koizumi in the shot. Next we hear Haruhi tell Mikuru to faint when she forgets what she's supposed to do because I guess the editor of this film doesn't know how to mute audio. Welcome back to more advertisements. I can't help but feel really bad for this second store because Mikuru just straight up tells us that his profits are down 80% and he needs the money so he isn't forced to go back to his dead-end corporate job. I sure hope he doesn't have high hopes for this advertisement, especially since it contains Haruhi handing Mikuru a Model AK and telling her to open fire in the middle of the shopping district. There's also this scene where Mikuru changes into pajamas. The camera cuts at the last possible second, and when we return, Kion feels the need to say this. Okay, we stopped the camera just before she took her clothes off. So don't bother asking us for the footage, because we don't have it. Alright, I think we're done here. All's well to then's well. Koizumi is together with Mikuru, and Kion does his signature camera pan to the sky to close things out. The credits roll as Haruhi reads off the standard This Story is a Work of Fiction spiel. She gets told by Kion to read it again, so she goes through it once more, audibly annoyed. Haruhi from the present then stands up and proudly proclaims that this movie is a masterpiece. And I couldn't agree more. It's awkward, poorly 
deconstructed, nonsensical, and they did it all on purpose just so they could snap my funny bone in half. Everybody except Haruhi is mortified by the final product, but I wish I could make something this terrible. It's truly a case study in just how low humanity can sink in terms of entertainment, but I guess I'll have to settle with just making a video about it. This video is a work of fiction. All character names, organizations, incidents, and any other names, phenomena, and such are fictional as well. It's all made up. Even if it resembles someone, it's probably just a coincidence. Oh, except for the Patreon thing. That's real. Special thanks to Silent Secondary and the rest of my patrons. Huh? I have to say it again? This story is a work of fiction. All character names, organizations, incidents... Wait a minute, nobody even told me to say this again. I'm in my room alone right now. Yeah, screw this, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>